This year we decided to walk away from Europe and North America and go to Latin America, which has had a long and rich history of musical culture. So Latin America is a uh, fabulous hybrid of indigenous traditions, Spanish rule, and uh, North American dominance in the economic sense. The leading composers um, of the 20th century uh, arguably are three, Ginastera in, in Argentina, Villa Lobos in Brazil, and Carlos Chavez in Mexico. And the best candidate seemed to us to be Carlos Chavez for several reasons. One, Mexico is our most important neighbor. Uh, it is the Mexican-American community that is the most rapid growing and significant um, uh, contributor to the population of the United States. So in his spirit, uh, he would never have uh, agreed to a kind of essentialist notion that uh, a festival surrounding his work would only have Mexican or only Latin American composers. Uh, he brought Stravinsky to Mexico. He gave the first performances of a great wide variety of 20th century works, and um, the records is part of that 20th century heritage, uh, which he brought to Mexico in order to build, particularly in Mexico City, a cosmopolitan musical culture. So it's not inconsistent with the philosophy of the Carlos Chavez himself espoused in his career as a conductor and as a uh, the director of the conservatory in Mexico and also as a minister in, in Mexico as a government official uh, uh, with a very prominent position in uh, promoting the arts in Mexico. He spent a lot of time in America, was very friendly with Copeland, with Lou Harrison, with Edgar Varese, with Henry Cowell, and spent a lot of time in New York and was a figure also in modernism generally conceived uh, in the 20th century. So he was not only a very powerful and influential figure in Mexico, but he was also um, an important figure in 20th century composition uh, per se. So he, along with Stravinsky and Copeland, uh, was an invitee of the Charles Eliot Norton lecture series uh, at Harvard, and uh, Justice Copeland wrote um, a uh, book uh, in response to that invitation, and Stravinsky wrote The Poetics of Music. Um, Chavez was the Charles Eliot Norton lecturer in 1958, wrote a very important book called Musical Thought. And uh, so he was a, an international figure, as well as the most dominant and powerful figure in Mexican musical cultural life. He came into prominence owing to the patronage of the founder of modern Mexican cultural and artistic policy, Jose Vasconcelos, who became the Minister of Culture under Alvaro Obregón in the early 20s. It is he, Vasconcelos, who had the idea of commissioning Diego Rivera and uh, Orozco and Siqueiros to do public art murals and gave the muralists their start. Uh, Rivera had spent time in Europe and Chavez had spent time uh, in North America. These were Mexican artists who were not trained uh, really under the old Porphyrian, um, um, one would say late romantic uh, European imitative cultural milieu, uh, but had sought their own paths, uh, embracing as part of their own identity, modernism. And Chavez was then um, asked, uh, to write music, because music is a public art, much the way a mural is, it, it helps define public space. So he was um, um, brought in by Vasconcelos as a young Mexican to begin to write a new kind of revolutionary Mexican modernist art that could help define the identity of Mexico, which was a place and remains a place highly differentiated by regions. Uh, we think of it as one place, but it's really a very complex um, uh, fabric of, of regional and cultural differences. So Chavez made a brilliant entry in the 20s and spent time in New York, uh, got the attention of Varese and Copeland, returned uh, to play in a very important role in uh, Mexico's public cultural life uh, under Cárdenas, in the 30s and later under Miguel Alemán 
uh, after the Second World War. Uh, he also wrote, for example, a ballet for Martha Graham around the same time that Copeland wrote Appalachian Spring, a um, ballet called Dark Meadow. And uh, he was a kind of synthesis of modernism and uh, an effort to create this new national Mexican identity. So part of his work, uh, which was celebrated along with an exhibit of Mexican art by the Museum of Modern Art in 1940, included works where he used um, an imagined Aztec music. Now, of course, complicated because uh, no one knows what pre-Columbian music sounded like. We have visual artifacts. Uh, we know what kind of instruments and uh, kinds of flutes and drums, but how they actually were used and what, what harmonic system they used, a melodic system, we really don't know. But it was an imagined uh, original music, if you will. But he did more than that. He also, uh, so he wrote music that was, we would consider um, imaginarily Mexican in some uh, pre-Columbian sense. He also, uh, like many composers, including his preceding generation, like Manuel Ponce, used the great Hispanic tradition of the 18th and 19th century, where there was a kind of uh, hybrid of Spanish cultural forms, some imported from Cuba as well, uh, and creating the Mexican song and dance, and he used that material as well. So there are works that are distinctly Mexican. And then he wrote works that are, could arguably be by anyone, they're cosmopolitan, they're just modernist and um, uh, very forward-looking, because the Mexican Revolution, which lasted in its most violent phase for 10 years, between 1910 and 1920, was um, um, a, a real watershed. And when finally it was stabilized into a political system, it was a one-party system, uh, and um, it was deeply nationalistic. And so when the Mexican Revolution was institutionalized, uh, there was a kind of national cultural policy, and Chavez was part of that. Initially, they looked to the uh, Russian model, the Soviet model of the era under Lunacharsky in the days when Lenin was still healthy, reasonably healthy and in power, which was uh, part of an effort to create a new art that broke with history, a futuristic art. When you think of Soviet art, for example, you think of Malevich and the constructivists. Well, this kind of radical modernism was considered consistent with the revolutionary idea. At the same time, they, people wanted art that everybody could enjoy instead of this modernism that most audiences don't like. That sounds atonal, sounds like somebody dropping dishes in, in your neighbor's uh, kitchen. So uh, there were two competing strands and Chavez negotiated between the two, the avant-garde and the populist. And um, he was a very, very fine conductor a very important teacher, and supported a lot of younger Mexican composers. He also fought with some, and we will perform this summer, music by both his opponents and his predecessors, including Ponce and Julian Carrillo, but also his teach students or protégés, Moncayo, Revueltas, and so. So the audience this summer will come to concerts in which I would guess 95% of them have never heard any of the music we are about to play. So that's exciting all its own, uh, that they will encounter something thoroughly new. Now, there's a couple of works have stayed in the repertory. Bernstein, for example, um, was a real fan of the Sinfonia India, which we'll do, which is a kind of more Mexican, self-consciously Mexican work. Although, ironically, the most important and not important, but the most often played work that represents Mexico in the 20th century is Copeland's El Salo Mexico, which we're not doing. But we are also um, going to do work by Latin American composers because Chavez was a real believer in a kind of Latin American solidarity. And um, he negotiated a very sensitive relation between the North American and the, and the South American and as did Copeland, his very close friend. So we're doing work by Ginastera, Estancia we're doing, 
and also by a person with whom Chavez really didn't have much contact and was a kind of rival from the non-Spanish uh, uh, heritage of Latin America from Brazil, Vila Lobos, we're doing the forest of the Amazons and Amazonas and by Vila Lobos. We're also doing a work by Nepo Buceno, who is an earlier uh, Brazilian composer. Uh, so uh, the audience will also get a taste of the richness of Latin American music in the 20th century. And in chamber music and in song, we'll also do choral music that dates back to the 16th and 17th century that comes from the uh, imposition of uh, Catholicism and its spread. Chavez himself, uh, as a conductor and as a powerful force in the development of modern Mexican musical culture, was a pioneer in bringing new European work to Mexican audiences. Uh, this is our most important neighbor and uh, a crucial uh, influence, present and future, of the shape of American culture and life. Mm -hmm.